What? What? Hang on. There was a tank, and now there's a TV, which, I mean, is that someone's tank? Is that the tank I'm about to see? Hopefully not, because there's a big Sergeant Major damsel right there uh, in the bottom of that screen. But, I mean, that's a good-looking tank. I, I like to have that as a screensaver on my TV. I could look at my tank, and then I could look through and see at this other tank. Okay, I'm getting distracted. Oh, I just got to say, too, I dig the kind of false fireplace with the mantle and the stone accent wall. That's cool. Here we go. I'm seeing the blue light. That means there's got to be a fish tank around. Aha. Oh, this is nice. So to give you some background, this tank is 72 inches long, six foot long tank, which is a great length. It's what I call a small, big tank. It's a way to have more swimming room for your fish, a place for a lot of tanks to feel very comfortable, but it's not what some people think is too big of a tank, which would be an eight footer. So if you're trying to pitch your wife or your spouse on a bigger tank, look at a 72, like a 72 30, 30 is great, or a 72 24. The 72 inch length will go miles for your fish behavior. It's a great size tank. All right, so we have a little different aquascaping than my taste with kind of some shelves here. I'm looking at that scully right there. I hope we get a shot up, a close up of that, maybe a bleeding apple. Uh, that's good looking. We got some lobos up front. We got a nice tang collection and some wrasses as well. And looks like there's no overflow box. Looks like this may be a hang on back uh, overflow box tank. Never heard good things about those. Um, but if it's working for this person, I'll leave that be. Clearly we got some gear in the tank. But look, it, it's all black, it's tucked away in the back. It's not too obtrusive for me. Look at that leather. That's a nice leather over there. I like the presentation too. Whoa, there's like this claw rock coming out towards the center. That's kind of cool. I haven't seen that on an aquascape before. I don't know if I would have put that many acros there, but I'm, I'm getting distracted here. That's cool. I'm curious on what it took to build that. Here we go, side shot. We got a nice arch here. This looks like some Caribsy uh, real um, or life, re life rock <clears throat> is what they call it. Some nice acros there. Um, this is cool. Showing some nice variety of corals. It's been a while since I've seen some scullies, especially a scully collection like this on a Mr. Saltwater Tank React show. Now, those of you that are looking at this saying, well, I spent a lot of money in corals, maybe so, but we're not seeing a lot of high-end um, gear on the tank itself. So, I'm sorry, I'm just like staring at those scullies like, Wow, those are really pretty looking. So we've got a, looks like a war paint uh, and then a bleeding apple, maybe two varieties on the bleeding apples. I'm digging it. All right, so we've got some macros. I like the torches. Looks like we got a sea anemone up front. Fantastic placement on the sea anemone. Not that you can place them where you want them. You kind of put them where you want and then they go anywhere they want and you can deal with it. But that one ended up in a great place. It's away from the acros. So the, a lot of people say you can't have a sea anemone in an SPS tank, which I totally disagree with. In this case, that scene enemy is parked right there. He's got his acros far away from it. So even if those acros grow out or that scene enemy moves a little bit, all those acros have some room to, to stay away from it. Good call there. Nice on nice placement of the corals. Okay, so let me say this. So he's got some nice acros up top, but it's like after the top quarter of the tank, then there's no more acros. So I, I mean, there's some digis in the back, but overall I like to see some acros further down uh, on the aquascaping. There's plenty of acros that don't need to be hammered with light, like the ones up top. It would just add some variety to this coral placement so we're not looking at SPS, LPS, and then LPS and softies at the bottom. I'm digging the Bellis Angel uh, going by there. I wonder if there's a male in uh, the tank as well. Yep, so I'm digging the Gorgonians. Some of these look like non-photosynthetics, so I'm curious if he's feeding those or if he's just had them. Um, they're likely, if they're non-photosynthetics, they usually don't do well. They need just too much food uh, than what most people can give them or that your tank will support in terms of nutrients. Nice side shot down the tank here. Nice 
liar tail looks like a liar tail super male there good looking antheus yep that's a liar tail the female right next to him love the bubble under the arch so we've got arches on either end of the tank different aquascaping most of the time the aquascape kind of fades out to the end and is left open and this person has arches on either side with the claw i'm going to call it the claw the claw billy it's the claw right there in the center with some acros on that okay so look here it is again. We got some acros on top of that arch. I'd love to see some acros further down. As they grow out, they can accent that arch and almost make like a, a cave through there because you have the acro and then you'll have the arm uh, going over it. Uh, I like the leather right next to it too. That's cool. We've got some big trachees down at the bottom, which are nice and fat and puffy. Haven't had a lot of success with those, but hopefully this client is. I just keep going back to the Scully Garden here. He's got four of them. I missed one. Yeah. And he's got a nice acro collection as well. A little different looking acros up there. Okay, so this is catching my eye right here. There are AI Nero's on the sides, and then we've got gyres on the back. Given that this is a six foot long tank, I would move those gyres to the sides because they're going to produce more flow and then put the Nero's in the front. Maybe even leave the Nero's on the sides, put the gyres towards the back so you're blowing water over those acros, over the aquascaping, and then you can move the Nero's to the front just to push some water down the front of the tank. Make a neat way to watch the fish interact as they swim by. They get pushed in the current a little bit and they get accelerated down the tank. So I would switch up the power heads there uh, because you're going to want more of that flow Given that this is a 24 inch wide tank, that gyre will likely take care of most of the flow down the tank. Put those gyres on the side, crank them up, put the Nero's on the back, and I would turn them down. It's pretty easy to push sand around when you're pushing water from the back to the front, especially on a 24 inch wide tank. Um, but just give yourself a little different flow, especially in time as those acros grow out. You're going to want to spread out the flow because they're going to need uh, more flow coming across them. Would love to see this tank in two years see what these acros look like and even visit it and maybe grab some frags for myself. Digging the arches, digging the amount of time that this person put into the aquascaping. Um, would love to see it be a built-in overflow tank, but I mean, it's not, and you're certainly not gonna go change your whole tank, uh, especially when it's looking this good, just to uh, change it out to change the overflow box. So there's some give and take there, but overall, let me back up and get a full tank shot for you guys and gals to get a shot again over it to remember this tank. What a nice setting, great place sitting here in the house, a nice place to look at and just take down and enjoy this tank. Yeah, this thing's gonna look fantastic grown in. I'm really digging the variety of corals here. We've got heavy SPS on top. You know, even though I don't like the SPS on top only, like we've got a great collection of SPS. We've got a great collection of LPS didn't see any we have some zoas in there i'd personally like to see more um, and we've got some lobos and other lps down in front so and even some gorgonias too this is a great example of a mixed reef with some great mixing inside of the specific um, coral groups or coral types uh, that are in this tank so great work nice presentation love to have this in right there in the middle of the house and uh, yeah, send me a picture in a year or two. Take lots of photos of this thing. I'm doing it with my reef. Same with you all with your reefs. Lots of photos. Day one, day 10. If you're going through an ugly rock phase, doesn't matter anyway. I would love to see a photo of this when it was new. See the photo of it now. See a photo of it in a year. Photo of it in two years. And of course, photos along the way. Take those photos. You'll thank yourself. And uh, sorry, I'm just still staring at those scoldings. That's awesome. <laughs>